So if we look at integration between Shopify and Dynamics, it is composed of a number of flows and you'll identify by the names of those flows exactly what it actually does. We will use the order from Shopify into Dynamics as our example today, uh, once we go into a little bit more detail, but just to walk you through what you're actually seeing here and the different options available to you. So we have two types of flows on the platform. Uh, there's scheduled and real-time flows, and that really depends on one, the use case you're trying to implement, and two, the support for real-time integrations that the specific systems will have. And you get to choose ultimately what you need to do. In the case of scheduled, you can choose the frequency as well that you actually need to have on that specific schedule. Very, very useful to have, and also inclusively being able to select which day. So for example, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, it's a lot more business happening. You might want to increase the frequency that you're bringing orders in from Shopify into your ERP, for example. Okay. Now, having said that, you do have, of course, the option to use only the flows that you want to. So you don't necessarily have to use every single flow available in this template. The ultimately, the way to do that is to switch on the ones that you need. So when you first install this template into your Celigo account, they will all be switched off naturally. So you just switch on the ones you actually need. And of course, for testing purposes, you can execute each and every one of them that you might want to have as well, just to ensure that things are functioning appropriately. Now, let's go into an actual flow and see what it looks like. And I'll collapse this menu here on the left-hand side so you can have a full screen view of what's actually happening. So, an integration flow on our platform is composed of multiple steps. And this one here is getting, for example, step number one, getting the orders from Shopify and then searching for details of that customer, for example, in Dynamics. So first identifying whether the customer exists. If they do not, then importing the customer and then finally importing the sales order. Now a sales order is composed of multiple things. It's composed of a sales order itself, the header level information, the line level information, which is imported separately in this case, and then finally any discounted information in question. So you can already see here that there is a lot happening. It's quite um, rich in terms of functionality there. So you have a lot of options that you can uh, use and um, include or not include, depending on what you want to have. So if you are comfortable in the platform, and we do certainly hope that you get to that stage, you can then start to change uh, the way this works. And this is the template, as I said before, it's a blueprint, so you are free to modify and, and to your specific use cases, as Ebrut was saying. Now, if we go into it, just a little bit of detail here to show you how things are actually built and what it actually looks like, you'll immediately see that the menu is contextualized. So in other words, it's relevant to what the system you're trying to integrate with. So Dynamics in this case, the API name ultimately indicates what's the record type we're talking about here. And there's sales order, but some people uh, in some use cases that we've seen wanted to introduce a sales invoice instead. And you can, you can modify uh, that specific case here. You can choose sales invoice as opposed to sales order and then change the mappings accordingly, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. You can also then change the operation in question. So it could be a create, it could be an update. So you can build a flow which updates sales orders in Microsoft Dynamics. And then of course you can have a create or update. So it does essentially both, identifies whether it exists. If it doesn't, it creates it, otherwise it will update it. Okay. Now I mentioned mappings before. Now the mapping is ultimately where you define how the data gets translated, if you will. You can think of it that way. Now, because this is a template, there are a number of mappings already done. Now you can modify each and every one of these mappings. Inclusively, you can also add mappings as well. And you have no limit to the number of fields that you can actually map here. Um, now, it will show up as a drop down as long as there is a contextualized uh, application. Again, in this question, we, we are connecting to Dynamics and to Shopify. So you will see a drop down of the fields. And of course, you can type ahead as well. Aside from that, you have multiple types of mappings that you can choose from as well. And we have documentation, extensive documentation, which explains in which use cases you should use these and how to actually use them as well. Okay. Now, once a flow is actually built and once you've gone through these steps of verifying that things are as you expect, then you switch it on and then you execute it. But then 
where do you actually see what's happening? How do you see that if something has gone wrong, for example? Well, that's where our dashboard comes into play. So if we go into here, you'll see that there will be a number of flows that you can actually identify in this case, um, in this dashboard. Now, in this particular case, there aren't any there. I haven't executed this integration in quite some time. There's nothing there to show. But nonetheless, you can see that you can start to filter integrations, for example, based on a specific flow in question, or for example, based on a status. So if you want to see all the flows which are with errors, then you can do that and it will essentially filter out that. Now, one thing which is important to highlight here is you will be able to see as soon as something is executing, in other words, as soon as a flow is executing and pushing across data from Shopify to Dynamics or vice versa, in the case of fulfillments, as Ibru said, then you'll be able to see this in real time. So you'll show up here that flow, whether it's a schedule flow or real time flow, you will see it here executing. You'll see such things as what's the status, completed or failed, for example, and how many records were processed successfully, ignored or in error. So you have a number of statistical information that you can have here. Including in that as well is you'll be able to select a flow and retry. Very, very useful from an error management perspective. It's probably the number one failing uh, or missing feature in a number of platforms, a number of um, integrations out there is the ability to retry and to really monitor things quite well. And the topic of monitoring, this is a dashboard that you can monitor things on, of course, but you do not have to baby this monitor. You do not have to constantly be looking at it. Ultimately, we want you to, to set Saligo and let it do its work. However, when things go wrong for whatever reason, you can be notified of them. So if we go over to the notifications tab here, you can choose which flows to be notified of. It is very common to be notified, for example, the case of a failed uh, push of an order into your ERP, for example, and also potentially fulfillments, information about fulfillments not going back as well. Those are very, very common flows to be notified of. What the platform will do is send you an email to say something has gone wrong in this flow. Here are the details and a link back to the platform uh, in question. Speaking of errors, if in, in fact, if it's not a functional error, but a technical error, an issue on the platform itself or with the platform itself, you can, of course, request a help from our support team straight from within the platform as well. Okay, so there is a, a mechanism submitting tickets straight from within there as well. And then last, but certainly, certainly not least, I did mention documentation. Now we do have a help center, which has a number of articles, uh, formerly known as a knowledge base for a good reason. And you can search there and of course, be engaged by a number of people from Saligo, as well as the community of, you, of customers that we have. You can also, of course, attend the Saligo University. Now attending it is operative word here. You can ultimately use it in any fashion. So you have a learning path that you guide yourselves through. You can get certifications as well through there. And it really is meant to be a really good resource for you to get up and running very quickly on how integrations should be done on our platform. All right, I hope that has been very useful to you. I do leave it open for any um, uh, use cases that you might have, any challenges you might have, please do reach out. I'm more than happy to give you guidance and explanations on how to take things further in terms of your automations.